So World Rugby have been trialling a few new rules in the lower leagues of rugby to try and both continue to make the game safer, whilst also trying to make the game more enjoyable to watch. And whilst I'm usually quite sceptical of rule changes in rugby due to our game already being complicated enough, but after my initial NO STOP CHANGING MY SPORT reaction, I've actually given these new rules a fair bit of thought and believe most of them will be beneficial actually. These rules being <clears throat> the 50-22 rule, which is if the team in possession kicks the ball from inside their own half, indirectly into touch, meaning it bounces before it goes out, inside the opponent's 22, they will get the throw in from that resulting lineup. The ball cannot be passed or carried back into the defensive half for the 50-22 to be invoked. The phase must originate in your own half, which means you can't do like a long pass from like the opponent's 10 meter line just over the halfway line when you attempt to do this. I believe the goal of putting this rule into place is that it will have a similar effect to the 40-20 rule in Rugby League, where a similar principle is used, with the team who kick the ball being rewarded by getting the ball back from the kick if it's successfully executed. The result of that reward for the attacking team meant that the defensive team would have to put more players in the backfield to cover potential kicks. This in turn creates more space in the main defensive line, as the defence has less numbers, meaning there's less chance for blitz-style defences to really get up in the faces of the attacking players, and it gives the attacking team more of an advantage, which I think, if it works, could be really useful for making the game a lot more fun to watch. My only concern with this will be that it has the opposite of the desired effect, and we just get a lot of teams using low spiral kicks into the 22 as their main attacking and territorial strategy, which would be rather lame to say the least, but fingers crossed that won't be the case. As well as we don't want to become like rugby league where teams get within touching distance of the try line and just put up a bomb in the dead ball area to see what happens, because in my opinion, it's very boring. Anyway, next up we have the goal line dropout. This will occur if any of the following three events happen. If the ball is held up over the try line, if there's a knock on from an attacking player when they're over the try line, or if an attacking kick is grounded by the defending team in their own dead ball area. You can take this goal line dropout from anywhere on your own try line, similar to a 22 dropout. This rule doesn't include penalty kicks and attempted drop goals, you'll still get the usual 22 dropout from them. And the usual rule about not being able to take the ball back into your own dead ball area and put it down still applies with a five meter scrum being given to the opposition. Now I'm actually a really big fan of this because it will encourage teams to look more for space when they get close to the try line. As we saw with the Lions this year and teams like Exeter for basically the last four, in the past it's been a really high percentage play to just start picking and going when you get close to the try line because there's less risk of passing when the defense has no choice but to fly up on you and if worse comes to worse and you get held up you get a five minute scrum which is effective but in my opinion a little dull but with this you'll still most likely get the ball back but you'll have to play your way back into the opposition 22 which is definitely more exciting to watch, as well as lowering the amount of scrums that happen in games, which tend to slow the game down as well. Creating more fatigue in games, and more gaps to open up in defence, more ball in play equals more fun. Now onto the third rule, which is actually another rule that might affect Exeter's trademark style of play, this new rule being referred to as the flying wedge. Basically, long story short, it's to prevent sort of mini scrum slash mauls appearing before the attacking player even makes contact with the opposition, which teams have often done close to the line to give the ball carrier as much weight behind them as possible to drive over the line. And this rule combines with the next new law coming in, which is that you can only have one player pre latched to you before you make contact with the defender. But the referees will be looking out for that latch player to stay on his feet, otherwise they're going to be penalised. I think this is yet another decision to encourage more one-on-one -on -one defending and attacking, which is honestly when rugby is at its most entertaining, whilst also taking a lot of the sting out of the collisions that players make with each other. Reducing the impact of collisions and trying to make the game safer, I think is something that we must continue to try and make possible. You're never going to make rugby completely safe as it's a contact sport, but we got to do what we can, and I believe this is a good step. Also less pick and go tries. Yay! And speaking of player safety, the fifth and final law change is around the clean out and safety of the Jackaloo. To make a long story short, they will now introduce a sanction for clean out which target or drop weight onto the lower limbs of the Jackaloo slash defending player. This sanction will be minimum a penalty kick, which probably means if you ever injure anyone doing this, you're off. Also, if you do this while shoulder charging someone, it can and most likely will result in a red card. I was also told by a ref in my first preseason game this year, you're not allowed to target someone's back when they're jackaling. You're expected to drop your weight and lift them off it, which is more difficult, but probably in the best interest of player safety, which is ultimately the intention of this, as it will probably make players less reckless at the breakdown and ensure less injuries happen to players while they're trying to steal the ball as well as less head-on collisions and all that stuff. It is interesting that they're trialling out all these new laws in lower leagues before the pros give it a whirl, 
I was speaking to a couple of my teammates about the concept of the professional game having one set of rules whilst us semi-pro amateur boys having another. Because unlike sports like football, the actual styles of play are quite similar as you go down the leagues. Obviously you have the slight skill downgrade the lower down you go, but the real difference as you go down step by step is the level of athletes. And these laws obviously have the pros in mind, because in my experience at the semi-pro levels of the game, you don't really get guys hurting themselves at the breakdown too much, because it's not our full-time job and if you feel someone about to crocodile roll you you just lift your feet up because it's not worth it basically just get your studs out the ground and try again next time i do think these rules will stick around in the game because i do think they make things better but with the continued growth of our game and players still getting bigger stronger and faster and fitter it will be interesting to see where it goes from here. Maybe the pros should adopt the limited three-man bench idea that we have in the lower leagues to get more fatigue in the game so collisions aren't as massive because players have to save slash pace themselves. It's all very interesting to me, and I look forward to seeing how it unfolds. But yeah, there's my thoughts on the matter. Hope you enjoyed. Signed, NGJ.